What's up, guys? Welcome to Breaking Walls, episode 11. My name is James Scully. Today on the podcast, we've got Monica Lowe, who is the creative director at Namaku in San Francisco, as our guest. And she works on a brand that makes one of the most affordable, most technically sound and proficient immersion circulators for cooking. And we get into what that is and how that's so beneficial to you if you like to cook and how you can bring restaurant quality meals right to your home, even when you're not home. Now, Monica is our guest because we wanted to talk to her about how serendipity played an important role in her life, taking her to different places like moving across the country from New York to San Francisco, why it's so important for Monica to be taking these kinds of risks, and for you as well. And Monica also happened to get her job through Instagram. We talk about how that went down, why it was such a serendipitous thing, how her love for food in general is playing out in her life and her career in ways that she could have never imagined had she not taken the trip and moved her entire life to San Francisco. Now, we're midway through the month of March. This is our mentor interview for the month. And as you know, the overall topic this month, which is tied into St. Patty's Day, is serendipity. Now, Monica believes that serendipity is preparation meeting opportunity. And I would really agree with that. It's, it's true that you can't fear what's right in front of you and shrink from it because there's going to be something even more scary right around the corner. Remember what last month's mentor interview, Chelsea Bonoski mentioned that just get out and do things because you're always going to be afraid of something. And we talk about with Monica how her willingness to take those risks helped her circumvent a failing economy in 2009 when she graduated from college. Before we go on, I want to remind you guys that this podcast is available on iTunes. You can go to iTunes, search for The Wall Breakers, and subscribe. That means that any time a podcast drops, which is twice a month right now, it'll automatically go to your device for your listening pleasure. And you can also listen to this podcast on SoundCloud.com slash The Wall Breakers. In both instances, Lena and I are asking you guys to please rate us, review if you like what we're doing, subscribe. We want to know what you think. And the uh, the reviews, honestly, have been overwhelmingly positive. I, I can't thank you guys enough. If you have criticism, don't be afraid to share it. It's how we will get better in the end. And if you have any questions of Lena and myself, do not hesitate. Send those questions over to hello at thewallbreakers.com. And I'll be happy, and Lena will be happy to answer them for you. So I'm not going to take up any more time here. I want to jump right into this interview. It's important. It's concise. Monica does a great job of clearly defining how she's benefited from the choices that she's made in an actionable way that you can use in your own life. So stay tuned right after this break for Breaking Walls, Episode 11, featuring Namaku Creative Director and all-around food enthusiast, Monica Lowe. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to this month's mentor interview. And this month, we're sitting down with Monica Lowe, who is the creative director at the San Francisco based Namiku. And what Namaku is, the most powerful and compact sous vide immersion circulator in the world. Now, Monica went to college at Pratt in New York and le later on moved to San Francisco. And we want to talk to her about some of the things that she's done in her life that when she allowed herself to face vulnerabilities, serendipitous outcomes happened. So welcome to the podcast, Monica. Hi, thank you so much for having me. And being silent on the other end right now is partner in crime, Lena Gonzalez. Hey, guys. I don't know how you guys feel about jumping right in, but... Let's do it. What Let's made you move to San Francisco? Well, I was working in advertising in New York for the past seven to eight years. I went to school at Pratt. I loved it. loved the experience. But after working in advertising for a while, it started to get a little stale for me. Um, my boyfriend at the time got a job in San Francisco and said, hey, let's move out. And I said, why not? Let's let's do this. And I moved out not knowing where that path would take me. I didn't have a job lined up. Um, I just knew that, you know, I had a skill set that I learned in school and learned 
from you know working in the advertising industry, but also passion projects that I had been working on in the side, and all of that kind of you know worked together. And when I got out to San Francisco, I landed a dream job, and it fell into my lab through Instagram, which was really it was actually pretty cool. <laughs> Didn't think that could happen, but you know I was just doing what I love. I had the free time to do it, and I uh, ended up landing my dream gig. Would you take me back to the time where you were deciding whether or not to leave your life that you had established in Brooklyn? And there is a sense of security that comes from that, even with your boyfriend at the time leaving. But what were some of the things that you weighed out, like as far as, do I make this jump and go to San Francisco, or do I stay here with what's comfortable and what I know? I mean, I, working in advertising, it's it's a cushy job that's really, really great money. I was good at what I did. I jumped from agency to agency, pretty much climbed the ladder. By the time I was 26, I was a senior art director. It was quite a trip. I went on amazing photo shoots and traveled the world, but I didn't feel fulfilled. There was, there was just something missing. Art to me is something that I'm passionate about and it's really personal and I had various outlets. I had you know, my design work, but I also had cooking and photography on the side that I love to do. I made myself do it on the side so that I could, I don't know, I, it just, it was something that I just had to do to keep my sanity. <laughs> you know, I had an Instagram feed, I had a blog that I was keeping up and I was just going out to the farmer's market and buying a bunch of fresh produce and cooking and taking pictures of it. That was my lifeline. Going out to San Francisco, you know, leaving my life behind. It was a difficult decision and I kind of left New York kicking and screaming and I missed all my friends, and it was beautiful when I left. I had a really great group of friends that it was a wonderful send-off. When I went to San Francisco, it was a whole new territory. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know if I wanted to go into advertising or if I wanted to try something different. But I had a lot of friends already on Instagram who were like, hey, you're moving out to San Francisco. That's really funny. I live here too. Let's let's go out. Let's go out and grab something to eat. I'll show you around town. And I've met so many people that way. People just took me in and I went to the awesome farmers markets. I met a bunch of cool chefs. I met a bunch of new friends, some of them that are my best friends now. And I kept doing what I did best, which was shoot and I cooked and um I got an Amiku actually for the holidays and I started posting pictures of that and I uh, landed a job with them. They asked me to come help food style for one of their video shoots and they ended up hiring me full time. That's awesome. How long between uh, the time that you arrived to San Francisco and getting an opportunity with Namiku? What was, what was the time span? It was about six months. Ah. So I had picked up a freelance gig um, working at an advertising agency. So I was doing that in the food selling stuff on the side. But, you know, it was a course of six months or so before I landed the gig full time. Cool. Yeah. Now, that period of time, the, the six months in between where you landed Namaku, did you ever have second thoughts? Did you ever say, I've got to get back to what I know already? That the scary void that you need to fill through like hard work and actually going out there and being like, this is scary as shit, but something's going to come if I keep pushing. What were some of the things that you were feeling at that time? It was very scary. At first, I didn't know if I wanted to take it. It was definitely one of those things where I thought, what if this doesn't work out? <laughs> Sorry, those are my dogs. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. thinking, what, what ha would happen if it doesn't work out? Would I be able to still get back into advertising? Do I want to go back into advertising? What's going to happen if it sucks and if if it's awesome, I, it, there was just so many things going through my head. And, you know, ultimately I decided to embrace the fear and just jump. And it ended up being the best decision I ever made. Ultimately, the um, relationship that brought me out to San Francisco failed, but I was in the best place possible for my career and for my passion to blossom. It's amazing. It's been great ever since. What kind of advice would you give someone you know, that period in between when you need to be patient and you need to stay open and you need to say like, oh no, I'm going to keep pushing this. What advice would you give someone who maybe is going through something like that, even if somebody, let's say, is unemployed and not sure what their next move is? How do, how do people stay sane without retreating back to their comfort zone, which might not be the solution in the first place? I would say keep at it. 
always be open and willing to pounce on opportunities when they arise. And knowing when those opportunities arise, no matter you know how small or how big, life's too short, really, you know, to be unhappy or average or stuck at a crappy job. I feel like if you're cultivating your passion, if you're doing something you love and you have a hobby and you're you're nurturing that, people will notice. You know, just make your art known. You know, whatever you're passionate about, it'll it will show, and people will notice. Absolutely. You know, one thing that I've always known about you, Monica, is if there's a big event happening, you will be there. You know, like, <laughs> you are you are not afraid to leave the house and like yeah. <laughs> go put yourself out there with people, which is a big important thing. You made those connections. You know, you wouldn't have been able to establish a new life for yourself in San Francisco if you sat at home huddled with a throw pillow on the couch, like afraid to leave, you know? Right. <laughs> I'm definitely a social butterfly, but it, it has worked out for the best. I love networking and I'm always happy to help. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always willing to lend a helping hand and I'm, I love talking. <laughs> so, What advice would you give to young designers considering the experiences you've been through and, and where you've landed today? What are like the top like one or two things that you would tell someone graduating right now? We were talking about this earlier, um, like one of my favorite quotes is, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Be prepared for amazing opportunities to happen. Put yourself out there. Put forth a positive image. Put forth your passions, your ambitions. Make it known. Things will happen and amazing things will happen. And if it doesn't, then it's something else amazing. You know, one, if one door closes, another door will open. And again, you know, life is really short, you know, don't get stuck at a dead end job, do something on the side, really have a passion project, anything, something that's like a lifeline that you can hold on to. I think you would agree that working in the advertising industry, it can sometimes be life consuming, you know, like a 40 hour week or a 45 hour week is like, how did that happen? That was great. Answering emails until all hours of the night. And it it is hard for somebody, you know, we're in our mid to late twenties. It's sometimes hard for people to have the time for those passion projects, but it's all the more reason to do it. You keep using the term lifeline, but you also said something, you said, make your passions known. Like, don't be afraid to say, no, this is what I'm really interested in. Because somebody out there might go, oh, wow, that's in line with what I'm doing with these four people over here. Come talk to us. Exactly. And especially with all these startups popping up everywhere, there's a place for everybody, I feel, in in New York and in the advertising industry. Though it was great and I did some really, really fun stuff, like ultimately it was kind of draining on my soul because I was working on multi-million dollar projects for other brands where I felt like I could be using that energy to make myself into a bigger thing, right? So moving out to San Francisco, I decided to take that energy and focus it on myself. And and they found me and I found other people and I found amazing things and great networks and I get to play in a test kitchen now. <laughs> and I get to mingle with all these other startups and like people doing amazing things. I just needed like a fresh start. I didn't realize I needed it until I moved out here. And I think that's something that maybe, you know, you hear about the quarter life crisis. Right. (laughs) I always thought that was a fake thing until like right around 26 or 27, where I was like, oh my God, that's real. Because what the hell am I doing in my life? So I think that's important that you are staying open-minded. I think sometimes when we have to fit things into a box that doesn't necessarily fit what we want, then things take on, it has to be a certain way in order for me to be happy, which usually is a clear cut way to be depressed and not happy. But you've stayed so open minded and I jumping to a new city would force you to do that too. So when when we think of serendipity and think of allowing life to lead you down certain paths, you believe that to be true, I'm assuming too. Yeah. And, and I always like to say, oh, my life, like everything in my life fell together because it's so serendipitous or it's a happy accident. But secretly, I know it's because I leave myself open to these opportunities, even if they're absolutely terrifying. And most of them are. But it always ends up somewhere pretty amazing if it doesn't work out the way you expect it. And it usually doesn't. It's usually something even more amazing. That's super cool. <laughs> I want you to know that we have a, I have a list, an outline. And it's like eight questions deep and you've answered like 
seven of them already without yeah, even asking them. Our questions. That's yeah, which is great, you know. <laughs> yeah, so uh, either it's proving the wall breakers theories as being true or you happen to be somebody who's willing to take those risks. To those who are at this moment afraid to take the initial jump, what would you tell somebody? Like, what, what, how, would you, how did you weigh things out in your own mind and eventually then jump to San Francisco? What were some of the specifics that you felt that you had to weigh out? Like, what is most important to you in the end? Happiness. Ultimately, if you're unhappy doing something or it's something that's just completely draining you, then it's probably time to move, time to pivot. Right. There are tons of things that I had to go through in the past to realize at this point that if it, I jump pretty quickly now, if, if something's not right, then I will try to make it right. Like for an example, standing up to my parents. When I was in college, I was an RA, a resident advisor. So I worked for the school. I had free room and board and I had all my meals paid for. And this was when I was a sophomore and I realized I should be interning. I should be, I should be working already towards my goal. I wanted to work in advertising. I wanted to be a designer and I should be, I should be in there. I should be doing it. But my parents told me like, why, why would you give up free room and board and free food to be an unpaid intern? Um, that's, that's stupid. That's outrageous. If you do it, we're not going to support you. Ultimately in my heart, I knew it was the right thing to do. So I quit my job as an RA and I took out a loan to pay my rent. I got an apartment and I was an unpaid intern for a while, which led to a paid internship, but it also opened up a lot of doors for me. I got to network with a, with a bunch of people. My creative directors loved working with me and that led to another job and another job and another job. When I graduated, which was in a very bad economy and a lot of people weren't able to find jobs after school, I was already working. I already had other doors open for me because I was in the field already. <laughs> so what you're saying is basically that you might have made a few sacrifices in the now to build the tomorrow. Mm -hmm. or, or sometimes the easy route is the dead end. And putting that little bit of strain on yourself also gave you the, the kick that you needed to get yourself out there and moving around and doing what you needed to do. And it was scary. I knew that I wouldn't be happy in this cushy job. I needed to get out there. I just I just knew that I had to. Ultimately, it opened up a lot of doors for me. So be fearless. <laughs> be fearless. <laughs> Very true. You are still in the design world. You're a creative director. But what you're doing is you're focusing on something that's a passion of yours, meaning the food. And right. uh, I think maybe sometimes people, when they're unhappy in their situation, like you were in the advertising world and, and it was something about it was missing the more. Maybe sometimes people, they tend to think that you have to throw the whole hand back in, but really you only need two cards instead of five, like in a poker analogy. Use some of the, the tools that you already have to move and, and pivot into another point. And you mentioned that too. For those people who are struggling, you mentioned things like pushing the outside uh, stuff after work, the boundaries for that. Doing the things that you need to do to pay the bills, but also looking elsewhere and planning the roads down for the future. So with you uh, being part of NAMIKU, what is coming up for you in 2015? What's next in the spring for you? Um, lots and lots of amazing things are happening at work. And I was lucky enough to fall into this amazing job that blended together everything that I loved. I love designing. I love photography, food styling. I love to cook. Um, it also adds in all the stuff that I had learned in advertising, branding, and marketing, and PR. Um, and as a creative director at NAMIQ, I get to have a hand in all of these things because we're such a small team. There's only eight of us. It's amazing watching the company grow that way. Recently, just a couple days ago, we announced that we're a YC company. So we're a part of this amazing accelerator program, which opens up even more doors for us. It's going to be amazing to see where all of this will lead us. We have a brand new program to uh, deliver meat to people in the Bay Area currently, but it could expand. We just launched a new app that I helped design, essentially, and that's, that's in the App Store now. That was like, quite an amazing project, working on a bunch of video content with 
top chefs. Top Chef Maylin was just in our office. It was really great to work with her. And we get to travel to all these expos. It's just, you know, a whirlwind of opportunities and so many fun things that I get to do with like this core group of like eight people, amazing team. And we're all just kind of, we're getting out there and who knows what's going to happen. But Okay. So <laughs> if somebody didn't know what an immersion circulator was, how would you quickly describe to them what the product is that you work on? Namiku is an immersion circulator. It's a sous vide machine, which means you cook things at a slow and very regulated temperature. So imagine um, a juicy steak, a medium rare steak. It's hard to do on a grill. You know, if you have friends over and you're chatting and it's on the grill, it can get burned within seconds or overcooked. Whereas if you cook in this water bath at a regulated temperature at 57 degrees Celsius, which I know is the perfect medium rare temperature, put it in a bag, drop it in the water, it holds it at that temperature, and it is perfectly medium rare every single time. You can turn around and talk to your friends, and it will never, ever overcook. All you need to do is take it out, sear it, give it that nice grill mark, and you're done. Top to bottom medium rare. And that goes for all sorts of you know, proteins like chicken, you can do fish, eggs, but also vegetables. Since it's sealed in a bag and cooked in a low temperature water bath, it is healthier. Vitamins and nutrients stay inside. It never leaches out. It's just, con it's convenient too. So if you're throwing a party, you can have all your stuff in bags in the water, 50 steaks if you want. Um, so this, this technique has been used in major kitchens for decades. Gigantic water baths holding, you know, food at a very regulated temperature so it doesn't overcook. So chefs can get the food out perfectly on time to all the diners. And we made the very first one for home cooks. And it is the smallest one on the market. And our new one that's coming out right now is Wi-Fi enabled so you can cook remotely. So when you're at work, you can make sure dinner is going to be ready on time when you come home, the moment you walk home through the door. So it's pretty cool what we're doing. That's amazing. You're not only bringing restaurant quality cooking to people's homes, you're allowing them to control it when not, they're not even home, mm -hmm. basically, which is that's pretty fantastic, uh, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all so busy nowadays. No one, no one can cook. And, you know, when you go and you go out to, to a restaurant, it's so expensive. I mean, secretly, sometimes I go out and I come home and I'm like, I, I can do that way better in my own kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> How would you say that with all the things that you're always doing, you know, you're, you're, you're putting yourself out there for lots of people. You're also working for a startup in a field that is basically your passion. It's both design and food. With all of this going on in your life, how do you take things one day at a time? How do you keep yourself present? How do you make sure that each step that you're taking is the step that you want to go down? Well, I like to just say to people that I, I follow my passion and there's nothing better than feeling completely consumed by something you enjoy doing. And I, I enjoy my work and I enjoy going out and hanging out with my friends. Um, you know, it being consumed by something you enjoy doing doesn't mean like being radical and going out and completely quitting your job. It's just, you know, finding the time to have your hobbies and your passions and letting yourself get engrossed with it, no matter how long it takes. If it's going home at night and, you know, putting forth a little effort and making a nice meal for you and a loved one, you know, that's that's something big or small. <laughs> I agree completely. And it's important, I think, for people to not let the excuse of a long day at work completely remove passions and enjoyment from their life, because then it's just a spiral. It's like a lifeline. You need the lifelines for you to eventually figure out what to do next with your life, because we're always evolving all the time, whether we'd like to admit it or not. It's true. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything that you would like to plug? I just wanted to say I'm always open and willing to talk to young designers and people who are, you know, looking to get a fresh start in the industry. I am at Monica at Namiku.com. Feel free to reach out with anything. I'm also Lobese on Instagram and Twitter. It's L-O-B-E-S-E. <laughs> Um, feel free to reach out. Happy to chat. And Namiku. N O M I K U. Dot com. Dot <laughs> com. 
Cool. This was a fantastic, concise interview. Uh, I'm so happy to chat with you guys. It's so good to see your faces as well. Miss you. Although those of you listening to this will not be seeing our faces, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, it's true. So this has been the Wall Breakers March mentor interview. The topic was serendipity, and the guest was Monica Lowe, the creative director at Namiku. I want to thank her for being so ready, willing, and open to talk about some of the things that have pushed her in life and what's going to keep pushing her forward. I want to thank my partner in crime, Lena Gonzalez. Thank you. <laughs> and until next time, guys, we are the Wall Breakers, and we'll catch you on the flip side. If you love something in life, make it known. That was something that Monica hit on in that interview, and it stuck out in my mind. If you are afraid to talk about the things that you care about, how will they ever become important, secure aspects of who you are? They're already who you are because you love it. Don't be afraid to tell people about it. Serendipity is preparation meeting opportunity. And part of that, of course, as we know, is being willing to be vulnerable and put yourself out there because if you're not, then nothing can ever happen. But once you do that and you leave yourself open and you are prepared, these great things can happen. Remember, Monica got a job through Instagram. She was just shooting food because she loved to cook. It made her feel good while she was trying to figure out what to do with her life. She got a Namaku as a gift. And lo and behold, here she is going all over the world for a product that she not only uses at home and can now use when she's not even at home, but something that she truly cares about and that has become an integral part of her life because it would be part of her life anyway. She's just figured out a way to monetize it. And that's really when we get down to it what the Wall Breakers is all about. Tools for a breakthrough career equals improving your own life because you feel good as a person, but also figuring out how to monetize our passions. Because if we can do that, then we can remove a portion of our life, let's call it a job, that we may or may not you know, want to go to. And once again, one of the things that I said in this interview that I think also rings true is that sometimes things are missing the mark in our lives and our inclination is to toss the whole hand back in and look for something new. When in fact, sometimes we really just need two cards and we're sitting on an inside straight draw. So for all you World Series of Poker fans out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But for everybody who doesn't know how to play poker, the point is that sometimes you don't need to scrap the whole thing. You only need to tweak portions of it and you can make the best for yourself. And that's what Monica was able to do. That's what I personally am trying to do. And I think that the more we get into each other's lives and the more we talk about each other's passions, and it's really not easy to do so if these interviews were, say, three minutes, but because they're long-form interviews, we can start to really understand how people think why they think certain ways that they do. And uh, recently, I was listening to a podcast featuring Rowdy Roddy Piper. It's his podcast on Podcast One. Uh, and he was interviewing Mick Foley. And they talked about similar things, about making mistakes. Mick Foley, by the way, is a three-time WWF World Heavyweight Wrestling Champion. And he's also a three-time New York Times bestseller. So they both talked about that you never learned anything from a something you did right the first time. You only can learn from mistakes. So you can't fear the mistakes because, like Chelsea Bonoski said, you're always going to fear something, so take those chances. Remember, the NHL, as we <laughs> add another sports reference, but the NHL's all-time leading point scorer, Wayne Gretzky, once said, I scored on exactly zero of the shots that I didn't take. And that's my big bit of advice for anybody out there who might be struggling this week. Don't be afraid to take a shot. Make your passions known because let's say that you were really interested in podcasting and I had this podcast and you said it to me, then maybe you and I have a partnership brewing. You know what I'm saying? If you're too afraid to bring something up to anybody, you won't ever feel secure about it. And the truth of the matter is, if you tell 100 people that you're really into something and 90 of them tell you to go jump off a bridge and 10 people tell you it's amazing and they want to join up with you, you just got 10 new connections. So take those chances this week. Because you know, life is all about growth. Life is all about serendipity. Life is all about vulnerability. When you can do these things and you can feel good about yourself, you can get into places that you never expected. It's the happiness 
that we least expect that is oftentimes the most happy. You know how I always end this, guys. Get out there. Springtime's coming. Pull some layers off. Admire people of the sex that you're attracted to as they pull clothes off and walk through the streets. And get out there, guys. Take those chances. Walk up to somebody you don't know. Give them a hug. Shake their hand. And keep getting out there. Keep breaking those walls, guys. That's what we got to do in this world if you want to make something. Got to break those walls. My name is James Scully. This has been Breaking Walls Episode 11. I want to thank Monica Lowe once again for her time. And until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you.